Japanese tales, Yam Soup. In his youth, General Toshito belonged to the regent's household. One year, after the regent's New Year banquet, he and the others who had served the banquet were allowed to eat up all the leavings. Sir Yao, a gentleman in the regent's service, sat with them, slurping leftover yam soup. Though the fifth rank, he bore was not much to boast of. Sir Yao thought it very fine. Ah, oh, he sighed, smacking his lips. I can never get enough of that stuff. Really, said Toshito, you still haven't had enough? No, indeed. Then I'll see that you get your fill. Oh, thank you, murmured Sir Gao. A few days later, Toshito appeared at Sir Yao's lodging and invited him for a bath. Sir Yao accepted. I am a bit itchy this evening, he admitted, but I've no conveyance. Oh, don't worry, said Toshito. I've brought you a nag to ride. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Sir Yao rose to go. He had on a tattered light blue outfit with rents and gaps here and there and not even a proper underwear under his trousers. The end of his sharp nose was red, and the drop, quivering there, showed that he had not wiped it for some time. Though his sash dangled raggedly from under the back of his outer robe, he made no attempt to fix it. All in all, he was quite a sight. Then Kurgis pair rode eastward toward the Camel River. Sir Gao did not have a single miserable boy with him, but Toshito had three, one to carry his weapon, one to carry his horse, and one to do whatever else was needed. They had crossed the river and were nearing the foot of the pass over into Omi when Sir Yao finally asked where they were going. Toshito assured him that they had not far to go and kept repeating these assurances as they passed Yamashina. What's going on? Sir Yao insisted, baffled. You keep telling me it's just ahead, and here we are past Yamashina. Oh, just a little further. It's on just a little answered Toshito as they crossed the pass. Sir Yao had once been to see a monk whom Toshito knew out that way, at Madeira, and he thought perhaps they were having their bath there. But it was crazy to come so far for a bath, and besides, they were nowhere near a bath anyway. What is this bath of yours, Sir Yao demanded to know. To tell you the truth, Toshito confessed, I am taking you up the Japan coast to Tsura. Well, you're mad. If you told me from the start, I'd at least have taken some men with me. Oh, we, you've as good as a thousand men, laughed Toshita, as long as you have me. On the shore of Lake Biwa, Toshito spied a fox. Ah, there's my messenger, he cried, and gave chase. The fox ran hard, but Toshito got it cornered, then dove at it and caught its hind legs. His horse did not look like much, but it was a remarkable animal. It had not taken long to catch the fox. Toshida held the fox dangling in front of him, and Sir Yao managed to catch up in time to hear him say, Fox, you're going up to Toshito's house on Tsugori tonight, and you're going to say, The master is bringing a surprise guest home from the capital. He wants his men to meet him at ten tomorrow morning in Takashima. They're to bring two saddled horses. If you don't deliver that message, you'll be sorry. You've got magic powers, I know, and you better get yourself there right away. Then Toshito let the fox go. What an odd messenger, remarked Sir Yao. Just you watch, Toshito said. You'll go. Surely enough, the fox ran straight off, glancing back again and again. <laughs> there he goes, cried Toshito, and the fox vanished off as he spoke. They stopped that night on the road and set off again first thing the next morning. At ten they saw thirty riders approaching. Sir Yao was worried, but Toshito assured him that they were his men. For Sir Yao, it was all a mystery. The riders dismounted before them. You see, they said to each other, our master's really coming. Toshido grinned and asked how they had found out. Oh, in a very strange way, sir, the senior retainer answered. Did you bring the horses? Oh, yes, sir, both of them. Since the men had food, Toshido and Sir Yao mount dismounted too, and ate. The senior retainer told them about the previous evening. Oh, around eight o'clock, sir, her ladyship felt a sharp pain in her chest. She was very agitated and wanted to call a healer. Then she suddenly, don't worry, madame, I'm just a fox. I met his lordship today on the shore of Lake Biwa on his way from Kyoto. I tried to run away, but he caught me and said to tell you he'll be here tomorrow with a guest. He wants his men to meet him with two saddle horses at ten tomorrow morning at Takashima. He threatened me if I didn't get here before the day was over. I hope the men will leave right away. If they're late, I'll suffer for it. She was terribly upset, sir, but when she had given the message, she came back to herself. 
We left right away and came as fast as we could. Toshida smiled and glanced at Sir Yao, who was feeling terribly confused. Then they hurried on and arrived at dusk. The household was amazed. Sir Yao got off his horse and had a look at the house. Oh, it was very nice. Toshido had already given him a good robe to wear over his thin clothing. But still, he was awfully hungry and cold. And now there was a big warm fire and soft mats to sit on. When refreshments were served, Sir Yao felt entirely comfortable. Then he was brought three pale yellow silk robes, luxuriously padded, and asked deliciously whether he had not been cold on the road. He was fairly swept away. After everyone had eaten and settled down, Toshido's father-in-law came in. What a way to arrive, he complained. The messenger you sent was insane, and your wife was very ill. You're quite mad. Toshido laughed. Oh, I just wanted to see what would happen, he answered. The fox did come, didn't he? Pfft, quite mad, the father-in-law repeated with a chuckle. Is this the gentleman you brought with you? Oh, yes. He says he's never had his fill of yam soup, so I brought him here to make sure he gets it. Imagine never having gotten enough of a simple thing like that, joked the father-in-law. He told me we were just going to take a bath, chimed in Sir Yao lightly. They chatted on till last Toshido's father-in-law retired for the night. Sir Yao went to the room where he gathered he was to sleep, and found laid out for him a night robe several inches thick with padding. His own thin garment was pitiful by comparison, and in any case someone else seemed to be living in it, because he got itchy spots every time he wore it. So he took it off and put the night robe on over the three pale yellow ones. Never having known such comfort, he felt as though he were floating. Soon he started sweating. All at once someone moved beside him. Uh, who could it be? I was asked to rub your feet, sir, said a young woman's voice. She seemed very nice, and he called her against him to keep off any draft. Suddenly a voice outside shouted, Listen, you peasants, each of you tomorrow morning at six bring in a yam five feet long and three inches thick. The order sounded absurd. Sir Yao just snuggled into bed. At dawn he heard a commotion in the yard, and then he finally got up and opened the shutters. He saw four or five large mats laid outside. He could not imagine quite what they were for. Meanwhile a peasant came in with what looked like a log over his shoulder, and laid it on the ground, and another peasant right behind him brought the same, and another, and another. The things were three inches thick. All right, and by ten o'clock they were piled as high as the roof. Every peasant around had brought in his yam. Sir Yao's mind reeled. Next, men marched in shouldering half a dozen huge cauldrons, good for hundreds of gallons each. They drove stakes in the ground and set the cauldrons up in a row. Once more Sir Yao's mind was boggled. Then came a crowd of pretty girls, all in white silk, and carrying some freshly made wooden buckets. They emptied their buckets in the cauldron. Were they going to heat bath water? No, Sir Yao noticed that the buckets held not water, but sweet vine syrup. A dozen young men picked up long knives and set to work peeling and slicing the yams, and Sir Yao grasped that they were going to make yam soup. But he did not want any. In fact, he did not like, like the thought of the yam soup at all. The yam soup was boiling merrily away, and the cooks reported it was ready. Serve it up then, cried Toshito, with a monstrous metal ladle. They sloshed a gallon or two into a huge bowl, and with a pleasure shirt, offered it to Sir Go. He could not even get through his first serving, and confessed he had had enough. Everyone laughed. Thanks to you, sir, they said, we've had all had lots of yam soup. Just then, Toshido spotted a fox peering at them around a corner. Look, he exclaimed, there's my messenger. Feed him. So they fed the fox some yam soup, too, and he ate up all that he was given. All in all, Toshido carried through his prank in a wonderfully open-hearted way. A month or so later, Sir Yao left again for the capital, burdened this time with robes for both daily and formal wear, with leather chests full of bolts of cotton and silk, and lead us to say, with the beautiful bedclothes he had slept in the first night. All this was already loaded onto his saddle horse when Toshido saw him off. Toshido did not have much rank, but it just shows how well a man can do anyway when he is well established. And he liked, and he is liked, in his own locality.